Alice makes orange juice from concentrate. So she has some concentrated orange juice. She's going to mix some water in and she's going to end up with juice, orange juice, unconcentrated orange juice. She uses two cans of concentrate to six cans of water. So two cans of concentrate to six cans of water. Now, because this is a part-to-part -part comparison, I'm going to also write eight parts total. Okay, so if I recognize that I have part-to-part, -part, it is sometimes useful to write the total. So what percent of the concentrate is the juice? So to get the percentage concentrate, I need to con compare the concentrate to the total. So if I want to find out this amount, I'm going to do two cans to eight cans total. And this gives me a ratio of one to four. Because I want a percentage, I'm going to divide. That's going to give me a decimal percentage of 0.25 cans concentrate. to one can water. Oh, sorry, not water, but one can total. And that's going to give me 25% concentrate in the juice. So how many cans of concentrate per can of water? What's the unit rate? So can of, co I want concentrate to water. So I'm going to use these two parts, concentrate to water. So two cans concentrate to six cans water. And we can write this as a unit rate. To get a unit rate, I'm going to divide this and I end up with 0.3 repeating. So I'm going to round that to 0.33 concentrate per water. So 0.33 cans of concentrate per one can of water. Steve Nash, he has a career three point percentage of 0.425. So a three point percentage is going to be 0.425 made so this is how many shots he makes for one attempt. So this is a unit rate. This represents a unit rate. So if he made 1,703 point shots, that's going to be in the part that's made. We want to know how many attempts. So the X is attempts. This is a unit rate so that that represents my multiplier from bottom to top so point times by 0.425 I want to go in the opposite direction so I'm going to divide by that same rate so the same multiplier now is going in the opposite direction I divide dividing those two numbers 1700 divided by 0.425 gives us 4000 shot attempts. Okay, so the made to attempts ratio is 0.425 to 1. So the shots made to the shots attempted is 1,700 to 4,000 ratio. Brock Besser, the Vancouver Canuck, he scores with a rate or ratio of 36 goals on 240 shots. So I'm going to write my ratio here as we're going to compare the goals to shots. And we're going to end up with 36 goals on 240 shots. So the unit rate is when I divide those two. So 36 divided by 240 it gives us a unit rate of 
goals. Again, it's important to keep make sure you know the direction of this comparison. It is goals per shot. For one shot, he scores 0.15 goals. Assuming he scores at the same rate, how many goals will it take, score will he score if he takes 500 shots? So the goals per shot, I'm going to use my unit rate, 0.15 goals. for one shot is equal to x goals for 500 shots. Nice thing about this unit rate is it my multiplier from bottom to top and my calculation is going to go from bottom to top so it's going to be times by 0.15. So I get 500 times 0.15 gives us 75 goals. Now we have been talking about how we can use the multiplying strategy to solve some of these problems. So if I look at this problem here, I have 500 shots and I want to end up with goals. I can I can know whether which direction I'm going to use my my ratio by making sure that the shots go on bottom, the goals go on top. So I have 0.15 goals. Now I'm using my unit rate, but I actually don't need to use my unit rate. I could have actually used this because both of those ratios have the shots in the denominator. This is times by shots. This is divide by shots. So these can cancel out and we're left with goals as our units. And if I just multiply this through times on top, divide on bottom. I'm going to end up with 75 goals. Now this one is the opposite. So if you were kind of guessing, this is probably going to be divide, which it, that would be correct. But let's make sure we can set this up. I have 0.15 goals for one shot. In this case, we know the goals, we want to find out the shots. So our multiplier is going in this direction, so we should divide in the other direction. And that would give us 42 divided by 0.15. So 42 divided by 0.15 gives us 200. You'd have to take 280 shots to get that many goals. What does this look like with our multiplying strategy? We start with goals. We're going to end up with shots. To do that, we have to have the goals units in the denominator. Now I'm going to show you that although I could use my unit rate of one shot for 1.15 goals, I'm going to use the original rate here. To make sure that the goals cancel out, I'm going to make I have to make sure that my goals ends up in the denominator. So the 36 goals up here, I'm going to put down here and that gives me 240 shots. Now, before I would have divided by 0.15, because that would end up in the denominator, but here, as long as I keep track of my times and divide, I keep track of my units, goals cancels with goals, times here, divide here will cancel, times on top, divide on bottom, make sure you don't times both the top and bottom. Remember, when we have fractions, multiplication only goes into the numerator. So if I do this calculation of 42 times 240 and then divide that by 36 goals, I get the same answer of 280 and I can see that the units left over is shots. So I end up with 280 shots, which is the same answer I got here. Now this is a slightly, these, this multiplying strategy is a slightly more efficient way to do it. But if we're not sure how this works, we should always go back to our proportional equation because a proportional equation is our go-to method. It's our simpler method. Anytime we get any harder problems and we get confused or not sure what we're doing, we always go back to a simpler strategy 
which would be to use, which would be to use a proportional equation and the multiplying factors involved in the proportional equation.